the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Hope is a light given by God at the beginning of creation. Hope is the gift of God. Hope is a light given by God in the teaching of the prophets. Hope is the gift of God revealed in the life of Christ. Hope is a light given by God, the Son of God, the Son of Mary. Let us pray. Source of light, shine in our lives and in your world with your renewing hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Stir up your power and come, powerful God. You made your son the king of kings. Please help all people of the world to love each other as Jesus loves us all. Amen.
A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord, our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. 
Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Vic and I took a trip on Thanksgiving up to Overland Park, Shawnee, actually Shawnee, Kansas side of Kansas City, to be with our um, daughter. In fact, all of our kids converged on that location, and we had Thanksgiving. But our car, both our cars, get, uh, do not get very good radio reception. So we've got one of those um, satellite radios, and it has a station devoted just to 1960s music. I can't listen to it for very long. But one of the songs that came across was this one. You may have heard it. It was a pretty big hit by the five-man electrical band from Canada. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign. Blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? How many of you... (laughs) <laughs> more than you that I thought, maybe. Of course, it also was a hippie song, so it had all kinds of things that, in that song. Um, but signs are happening. And that's what Jesus was w- warning the disciples, because signs were happening even in Jesus' day. Here's what he said. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Almost seems like something out of uh, uh, Al Gore's book, right? The roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken, But here's the good news. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, in power, and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. So the good news is that Christians, even in the face of calamity, are those that can raise their heads in confidence. I know that's not easy, is it? When you're looking at one of the biggest hypocrites when it comes to lifting your head in confidence. Why? Redemption is drawing near. Is drawing near. So there are signs. And, and we can see them. We've got terrorism going on in our country. We know what happened in France with the uh, terrible killing of innocent life there. We know what happened in Colorado Springs day after Thanksgiving. An unfortunate loss of life there. Our own homegrown terrorists uh, find it disturbing But in St. Louis, seven churches have been burned, predominantly African-American. It just adds to the racial tension that's happening in our country. So we can say signs, signs, signs are happening. And Jesus said, lift up your heads 
because your redemption is drawing near. Lift up your heads. Jesus tells us that we can have hope no matter what's happening. And hope is having that confidence. We could say Christian hope is having that confidence that God will act and God will redeem any situation, no matter how black it gets. There's nothing that can happen to us that God will not redeem. Nelson Mandela has been one of those that seem to always have hope. Spent um, 27 years in prison. Bad things were happening. He could have been uh, lost in a state of gloom, but instead, this is what he wrote. I have found that one can bear the unbearable if one can keep spirit strong even when the body is being tested. Strong convictions are the secret of surviving depra deprivation. Your spirit can be full even when your stomach is empty. I always knew that someday I would once again feel the grass under my feet and walk on the sun, in the sunshine as a free man. I am fundamentally an optimist. Part of being an optimist is keeping one's head pointed toward the sun, one's feet moving forward. So for us, how much more when we keep our face pointed toward the sun, toward our redemption in Christ, and keep moving, He's, keep moving forward. Jesus is telling us that Christians do not escape great tribulations. In fact, the text says it's going to happen to every person on earth. Difficulty. But keep our eyes focused on him and keep moving forward. Even though bad things happen, to good people. We are to trust that God is in charge, God is behind history, God is embedded in history, and that God is marching in front of history. Let's look at hope for a second. I'm going to give two gloomy illustrations. The first from Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl lets us know that even in the midst of of a very gloomy, dry situation. Somehow, somehow God comes to us. He was um, in the Nazi concentration camps, a death camp, and he talks about the day that he was working outside of the fence digging a ditch. And he looked at the faces of those around him, and they just seemed gray and lifeless. He even thought of the, the trench that he was digging as drawing him in, and it would even become his grave. And he said this, We were at work in a trench. The dawn was gray around us. Gray was the sky above. Gray the snow in the pale light of dawn. Gray rags on which my fellow prisoners were clad. And gray their faces. He was ready to die. They dug on. But he asked the question, why should I go on? What would be the purpose in living? So he writes, there was no heaven, no hell, no future, no past, only the clutching grayness of this miserable moment. And then suddenly, Frankel says, a last violent protest came to him. His body was protesting, surging within. He sensed that even though his body had given up and his mind had accepted defeat, his inner spirit was taking flight. 
It was searching. It was looking. It was scanning the eternal horizons for the faintest glimmer that said his fleeting life had some divine purpose. He was looking for God. In a single instance, two things happen. Within, Frankel heard a powerful cry. The voice shouted, yes, against the no of defeat and the gray, I don't know of the moment. Within himself, he just heard, yes. The world around him said no. But he, in this defeated moment, something within him said yes. And then at that second, a light lit in a distant farmhouse. Like a beacon, it called attention to itself. It spoke of life, warmth, family, love. In that moment, Frankel said, he began to believe. In that moment, he began to live again. In that moment, he began to believe. Something within himself said, yes. A light goes on in a farmhouse. He saw them as signs, and they filled him with hope. And Frankel says, with hope, you can go through anything with hope. So we are to meet the signs of hope we see. We, in the United States, life is pretty good for us. It's sometimes hard to recognize the desperation that Frankel felt. But no matter what happens to us, always hope. And we see that it's really quite a mystery, isn't it? How it came to Frankel? Hope is a mystery and how it can give us that strength. Another person who saw, saw signs, and we could say signs of Christ coming, and that was Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Of course, he was in a different kind of prison camp. He was in a, a work camp, a labor camp in in Russia. And he said he had come to the point where he wanted to die. He was going to rush a guard and beat a guard so that he would get shot and killed. That's what he was going to do that day. And as he was working in the labor camp, he stopped to take a break and he was sitting down. And he said, a man came to, a, a man he had never seen before. And he said, a man I had never seen after that moment. But this man came and sat down next to him. And he said, for no reason at all, he reached over with a stick and drew a cross in the dirt. Frankel sitting there contemplating having a guard to kill him. He said this of the moment. I stared at the cross, and as I did, so my spirit was quickened by the presence of Christ who died to make men free and whole. Fresh courage flowed through me, and the will to live returned. I was determined to bring love to that barren labor camp, and if you know the story of Alexander Solzhenitsyn, he did bring love to that camp. A sign. A sign of hope. So when we see the signs of terror and difficulty and heartache, sometimes in our personal lives, sometimes in our world, we're to look for the signs 
of hope, of the presence of God, the power of God that brings life. I saw one, uh, heard about one of those signs yesterday. Maybe all of you heard about it on the radio. A janitor was setting up a crash, manger scene in a Roman Catholic church. And he went to take a break, and when he came back, he heard some crying, and he goes over, and there, wrapped in blue towels with an umbilical cord still extending quite a distance, is a newborn baby. I saw that as a sign of hope that a young woman who was so overwhelmed by the burdens of life, she couldn't take care of this newborn saw the church, saw a manger as a place to abandon her baby. Why? Because she knew there the people had hope and they had love. So this Advent season, look for the signs. Oh yes, you could look for the signs of the end. But most importantly, look for the signs of hope. Amen.
Emmanuel has come, is here, and is coming soon. Let us join in prayer for the church, the earth, and those who are in need, that all receive what God promises to give. Come to the church, saving God. Grant to your people your redemption. We stand with all Christians who are persecuted for the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Reveal yourself to this congregation and to our community, gracious God. Deepen our love for one another. In this season, give us compassion for all who suffer and keep us from selfish excess. Lord, in your mercy. Come to the nations of the world, sovereign God. Inspire all leaders to work for justice. Bring peace to Jerusalem. We give thanks for those who choose to stay to do their everyday things. Cancer doctors and nurses in Gaza, midwives and pediatricians in the Central African Republic. We give thanks for those who rush to give aid and support following the bus blast in Tunis, Tunisia, first responders in Colorado Springs. We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Come to all in need, mighty God. Protect those who suffer injustice. Comfort those who live in fear. Heal the sick. We pray especially for Odella Arnold, Mitch Allen, Ken Bohannon, Katie Brady, Linda Brashear, Pam Cole, Jeff Dykeman, April Hollinger, Larry Hopper, Dustin Jones, Alan Kamens, Jim Lampy, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Adam Miesenbrink, Noah Miller, Shauna Nelson, Bob Okri, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, Rachel Scrantz and son Lincoln, Carl Severson, Lynn Starr, Florence Stowell, Kylie Timmerberg, and Ann Wilbur. Are there any others? Loving God, you bring to yourself all the faithful who have died. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Dennis Crane and Roy Milligan. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers, merciful God, and make us ready to receive you when you come through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
pray. Merciful, Merciful God, God, the leaves scatter from the trees as we approach winter, only to become full again. We become scattered in our lives, only to come together in the presence of God. Light the way for us as we seek to live in fellowship with Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give him thanks to who the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a, a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us, and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today us our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us, us from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the power, the power and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. God, you have called your people together to test our faith, not always able to understand your plan, but knowing that you will guide us on the right path you choose for us. Lead us as we go out with good courage, your hand leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ the King, our Lord, now and forever. Amen. those who go forth to share your word and sacrament with our sisters and brothers who are homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this communion, that through the body and blood of your Son, we may all know the hope of your promised coming. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of things. Uh, <clears throat> you can see our tree is up, and two more trees are up, and uh, the decorating, the hanging of the greens is going to happen Wednesday evening, starting about five o'clock. Of course, we have supper. You can come for that also. And if you have some time, come and uh, stay for until it's done. <coughs> which might be 9 o'clock, or come for what you can have time for. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Dan, you may note that this year the tree did not <coughs> fall over. Not yet. <coughs> it did not fall yet. I am not anticipating it falling, David. You did a good job. David just wants a pat on the back. <laughs> we'll give it to him. Other things in your bulletin, uh, you can uh, sponsor a, a um, poinsettia in the name of a loved one, in, uh, in honor or memory of a loved one. Uh, if you want to help with a um, toy store, Cross Science Toy Store, <clears throat> see Bruce Callen. There's still angels left on the angel tree in the back. Uh, the Child Care Center is sponsoring a breakfast with Santa next Saturday. <coughs> Not next Saturday morning, but two Saturdays from now. Read your messenger. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care for all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thank Thanks you. be to God.